Hi, my name's Patty Woodard. I'm from Tome, New Mexico, um, from Indiana. I moved out here to the land of enchantment and I began making art. Uh, one of my favorite things is the project that we're gonna do today, which is shrinky dink or shrink plastic. Um, I've been in many craft shows and I've taken many art classes all over the United States. And so, but a lot of the things that I make are self-taught. I do, uh, I knit with wire. I make fiber and fabric things. I do assemblages and I make things out of other things like my necklace. This is colored pencils and buttons. Um, I've always had an interest in anything that's art. So <clears throat> one of my favorite things, like I said, is shrinky dink. And so be sure when you get your kit to you make sure that you have everything that you need. We're using opaque shrink plastic today because you can see through it easily and it will make, allow you to copy the patterns without any problem, but also feel free to make up your own designs. These are not the only things that you can make. One of the things that I like to do is make sure that I scooch it all close together so that I have more to play with, more shrink plastic to play with. So let's start. You need uh, your shrink plastic taped down to your design. And when you're coloring it, you start with all the lighter colors and you use um, permanent markers on this because water-based markers won't work on this, what we're doing, our project. And you get them very close together, as I said, so that you'll have more to play with later. You start your light colors, you add your black, and then after it's cut out, you punch your hole. So that's how you do the coloring part of it. And um, if you do the black as you're working with it, the other lighter markers will pick it up and it'll make, it'll just, uh, make your color muddy. So as I said, you start with your shrink markers and you start coloring on your, just right on your uh, plastic after you've taped it so it won't move around. And then after you get it cut, I mean colored, then you cut it out and I'll show you sort of how to cut it out. I, I, you just use any kind of scissors and you can cut it right on the black line or you can cut uh, definition, definition or just easy peasy go around the edge like that. Then when you get it all cut out, you need to punch a hole in it. And, just a regular hole punch with kind of a big hole to punch and be sure that when you're punching it, and this is written in your kit, that you need to come down a little more than a fourth of an inch so that the um, hole is not right near the edge. As it shrinks, everything shrinks. So this little part might shrink and fall apart. So we have them all cut out. Now it's time to put them in. The oven. the oven you can use is, uh, I use a, I have about five toaster ovens, and I bake it on aluminum foil, and the temperature is 325. You put it in, uh, usually not touching, not overlapping at all because it'll all stick together. You close your oven, you watch it, you pull it out, you open it up. And you pull it out with your spatula. It's not really that hot, but don't let kids. You lay it down on a paper plate or a wooden board and you smash it to keep it nice and flat. So if you haven't put your hole in, now you've made a pin. <laughs> so you can glue a pin back on the back of that. So let me show you how to open the jump rings. The jump rings have uh, split rings, they're called. No, they're called jump rings, sorry. They have an opening. 
And you can use a regular pair of pliers. And if that's all you have, then you can use a screw. And when, but I'll use two pliers, but you just grab a hold of it so that the opening is at the top and you twist and push inward. You hook your charm onto your ring. You hook your ring onto your bead, and I'm sure you've planned this all out where you want them so that they're all together. And then when you close it, it should make a little pop sound, a real tight sound. Then you just go like that, and you have a new charm for your bracelet. So, I won't put all And one of the things you want to remember when you're coloring is not to make them too dark. If they're too dark, they aren't very pretty, like this one. It's really gonna just shrink up to nothing. It won't be pretty at all. So I stick with light colors, accent with dark colors or black. There, there are um, all different colors of shrink film. They call it shrink plastic. This you can print with on the, your inkjet. Just remember to print them large so that when you shrink, they go down, not too tiny. And also use your opaque or your clear and sand it. And then you can draw on it with uh, good colored pencils. And then when you shrink it, you have like drawings. Here's a sample of the black. And then samples where you make things that hang off like the, and this is printed. This is two piece, it's a pin. You make it together and then you get it together with your little picture in the center. And you can make all kinds of fun little things with your scraps. You can add clear coat on it to give it a shine and a little bit of depth. These are all, you can order these on Amazon. Um, at, you can get them at any craft store. Walmart, I think, even might carry them. I have a lot of kits at the gallery, uh, Diego and Frida, and then I have little Day of the Dead people also. So if you have any questions on how to do this or other ideas about what you want to do with shrink, my, all my information is on the bottom of the, basically the directions on how to make shrink wrap bracelet. And these are two bracelets, well actually one bracelet and two necklaces. So if you're gonna use, um, do a necklace, someone thought of putting the holes on the corner and then stringing a little bit of wire so that you have three hanging, or this one is just the whole thing down in the front with a couple beads, a couple beads. So thank you for your interest. This is one of the most fun projects you'll probably ever do. I could do it every day. Thank you.